Namaste. Tonight's talk is the absolute truth. What or who is it? Now scientists agree that all time, all history, and all creation start from a single point. And that point would have to be the ultimate or absolute truth. So what exactly is the absolute truth? How do we go back through time and space to find the original source of everything? Even if we research the Bible, the Koran, the Jewish writings, or even the Sikh, Zoroastrian, or Buddhist texts, we find limited information on what exactly is the absolute truth. And forget about depending on modern science. They are still searching and have many varying theories to offer. Fortunately, the Vedic texts of India have always been a guiding light to provide knowledge of what is the absolute truth. For example, the second verse of the Vedanta Sutras clearly explains, quote, The absolute truth is that omniscient, omnipotent, all-merciful being from whom proceeds all things. In other words, origins, sustenance, and dissolution. End quote. Now this is similar to the Atreya Upanishad, 1.1 1, 1, verse 2, which states, quote, he, meaning the Supreme Person, created this entire material world, end quote. Herein we start to understand that the Absolute Truth is a person, the Supreme Person, who is all-powerful and fully merciful and the origin and source of everything. Thus, the single point from which all time, history, and creation originate is this Supreme Person, or God. Actually, this is only logical because material nature is inert. It cannot be the cause of its own creation. Thus, a living brain is behind the great plan for this manifestation. Seeing how everything is wonderfully arranged in the material world for its continued existence, we should understand that a living brain, or a person, is the cause of this development, or the arrangement, just as a building cannot develop itself, or build itself. It depends on the arrangement of some living person. Now the Atreya Upanishad 3.11 goes on to explain, I quote, He saw and his power sent forth the creation, end quote. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 4.4.22 continues, He is the Lord and controller of everything, end quote. Now the Vishnu Purana 1.3.2 also explains that all creative energies that act in the process of creation, maintenance, and annihilation are the natural characteristics of the Supreme Truth just as heat and light are the natural energies of fire. Therefore, we can understand that everything in the cosmic creation emanates from this absolute truth. And even after its annihilation, the material energies again enter the same absolute truth. The definition of this absolute truth is presented in the Vishnu Purana 1.12.57 that he is the all-pervasive, all-increasing, changeless soul of all. Furthermore, he is one without a second without whom nothing can exist. The Svetasvatara Upanishad 6 verses 1 through 5 goes on to explain that God is the ultimate cause of all causes. It is He, the Supreme Person, who pervades the whole world with His consciousness and power. He is the controller of time through which the creation itself unfolds. It is He who sets the creation in motion and then rests peacefully after uniting the individual jiva souls with the principles of matter or the material elements. He is the primal cause of the universal creation and propels the living beings toward their material desires. He is the one reality without a second, beyond matter and time. He is beyond the perception of our senses, but can be perceived through the eyes of devotion. He is immortal and the monitor of every living being as a super soul in the core of everyone's heart. Knowing him in this way can lead one to final liberation from the material energy. Now, the Svetasvatara Upanishad 6.8 gives further information about the nature of God and describes the Supreme as having nothing equal to or greater than him. Through his various potencies, he manifests his parts and parcels, the individual living beings, who are all situated differently within his nature, or the material elements. Later on, in verse 13 of the same chapter, we find it said, and I quote, The Supreme Lord is eternal, and the living beings are also eternal. The Supreme Lord is cognizant, and the living beings are cognizant. The difference is that the Supreme Lord is supplying all the necessities of life for the many other living entities, end quote. The point that God is one only is repeated in the Svetasvasara Upanishad 3, verse 2, 
And he quotes, Truly, God is one. There can be no second. He alone governs these worlds with his powers. He, the herdsman, after bringing forth all worlds, re <clears throat> reabsorbs them at the end of time. End quote. So herein we get an additional hint of who is the Supreme Person. We find he is called the herdsman, which is a clear reference to his pastime of being a cowherd boy. And this is none other than Lord Sri Krishna. And this manifestation of his material energy is considered to be only one of his innumerable pastimes, only part of his different energies. Now the Karma Purana also, 1, 5, verses 1 through 3, relates that there are innumerable names for the Supreme Person. He is named according to his qualities and activities. And I quote, Because he is not born of any prior person, he is called Svayambhu, self-born. Since he is the goal of men, he is called Narayana. Because he is the remover of samsara, or the cycle of repeated birth and death, he is Hara. He is called Vishnu because of his all-pervasiveness. He is called Bhagavan because of his perfect knowledge of everything. And he is called Om because of his protectiveness of all. He is called Sarvagya, or omniscient, because of his knowledge of everything. And he is called Sarva because he is identical with everyone, spiritually in the same quality, but infinite in quantity. End quote. And as we find elsewhere, the name of Krishna means the one who is attractive to everyone, and who can provide the greatest pleasure. Now in the Vedic classic of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, verses 6 through 7, Lord Krishna is quite clear about being the Absolute Truth, wherein he says, quote, Of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both its origin and dissolution. No truth is superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. End quote. Also, chapter 9, verse 5, Krishna explains that he is the maintainer of all living beings and the very source of creation. In the four most important verses in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, verses 8 through 11, Sri Krishna also explains, and I quote, I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts, end quote. Even in the Rig Veda, book 1, chapter 22, verses 20 and 21, which is one of the oldest of all Vedic texts and of all books in general, establishes that there is no higher truth than Lord Vishnu or Krishna. It's quotes, The supreme abode of Lord Vishnu or the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu is spread all around like the sunlight in the sky. Great demigods and saintly persons always see that supreme abode, recognizing him as the highest truth. Spiritually awake souls, learned in transcendental understanding, glorify the Lord and make that abode more brilliant. End quote. Now, Srila Jiva Goswami also presents a common verse that is found in three Puranas, namely the Padma Purana, Linga Purana, and Skadna Purana, which states, quote, By scrutinizingly reviewing all the revealed scriptures and judging them again and again, it is now concluded that Lord Narayan is the supreme absolute truth, and thus he alone should be worshipped, end quote. Now, the Srimad Bhagavatam, or Bhagavad Purana, such as Book 10, verse uh, 4 of chapter 85, also specific, specifically relates how Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who manifests as the Lord of Nature and the Creator of Nature, as Mahavishnu. Everything that comes into existence, however, and whenever it does so, is created within you, by you, from you, for you, and in relation with you, all meaning Mahavishnu, Krishna. Because Mahavishnu is but an expansion of the Supreme Absolute Truth, one of the avatars. So, the Srimad Bhagavatam in 11.24.19 goes on to describe how the material nature, time, and even Mahavishnu all come from Krishna, who is the Absolute Truth. Furthermore, it is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam 7.9.31 that the entire cosmic creation is caused by Lord Krishna and the material manifestation is an effect of his energy. Now, Sanatana Goswami also concluded, as related in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Majalila, chapter 20, verses one, verse 150, I quote, Both the material and spiritual world are transformations of Krishna's internal, or spiritual, and external, 
or material potencies. Therefore, Krishna is the original source of both material and spiritual manifestations." End quote. The three main categories of these energies of the Lord are explained in the Vishnu Purana, Book 6, Chapter 7, 61 through 63. These are the spiritual potencies which are by which the spiritual world is manifested. It is this spiritual world, this potency which manifests the spiritual world, but it's the living entity which are which belong to the marginal potency, since they can enter into the, either the spiritual strata or be subject to bewilderment in the material energy. And the third energy is the material potency itself, which is filled with ignorance and exhibited when the living beings become godless or instilled with the desires for fruitive materialistic activities. It is this darkness which covers the living being with forgetfulness of his true spiritual position. Thus, the living beings exist in numerous forms and species while in the material creation. Through these energies, all the aspects of the spiritual and material worlds are manifested. In this way, we can understand that not only does everything come from the Supreme Being, but nothing can exist without Him. Now, the Vishnu Purana 1, 12, 69, goes on to explain that the nature of the Supreme Being Himself is Satchit Ananda Vigraha. This means the personal form of God, which is eternal and full of pleasure and knowledge. Thus He is beyond all material influences. However, the living entities, being part of the Supreme in quality, can also experience this eternal pleasure and knowledge to a lesser degree once they regain their eternal spiritual position. Thus, whatever we see in this material world is but an expansion of the different energies of the Supreme Person. It is He who is the Supreme Being and Creator of all, and this is why the Brahma Samhita, for example, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 explains, and I quote, Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the supreme controller. He has an eternal, blissful spiritual body. He is the origin of all. He has no other origin, for he is the prime cause of all causes. End quote. And this is also why Krishna Das Kavaraj further explains in his Chaitanya Charitamrita, and that is the Adi Lila, chapter 1, verse 3, quote, what the Upanishads described as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body, and the Lord known as the Supersoul is but his localized plenary portion, or Supersoul. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or Krishna himself, full with six opulences. He is the absolute truth, and no other truth is greater than or equal to him." End quote. Now, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.3.28 specifically relates Krishna Stu Bhagavan Svayam, which means that out of all the various avatars of God, and I quote, Lord Sri Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God in person, end quote. All other incarnations or avatars are but plenary portions or portions of the plenary expansions of the Lord. In this way, we can understand that the ultimate philosophical conclusions as presented in the above Vedic references and by various spiritual authorities, is that the Absolute Truth is a person known in the Vedic literature as Sri Krishna. It is He who manifests the material creation through His various forms and energies. Many more verses that establish this are, but, are found in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Brahma Samhita, as well as various Puranas and other Vedic texts written by many spiritual masters or teachers that verify the same point. These are just a few of the references that establish who or what is the Absolute Truth. So this can give us a little insight into the nature and the position of what is the Absolute Truth. So thank you very much. This can be somewhat a complicated topic, but I, hopefully, uh, I hope that this has given you some uh, understanding of what it is all about. So, Namaste, and thank you very much.